the house and inheritance of $3 million, and the position of hospital director will be inherited by my eldest son, your husband, I heard the lawyer say, and Liz, having caught wind of the lawyer's visit, gleefully barged into our living room. She had always been impatient, constantly pestering me about the inheritance and behaving arrogantly. She must have been eagerly awaiting this day. As Liz approached the lawyer seated opposite me, the old me would have raised my voice in protest, but now I was almost excited to see what she would say next, her greed surpassing all expectations. Her audacious words made me burst into laughter, much to the bewilderment of the lawyer. Her brazenness was so absurd that I couldn't help but laugh out loud. Liz, of course, looked at me with a cold gaze, clearly not amused. Do you really think you're entitled to my father-in-law's inheritance? Really, her single-minded obsession with money made me snort in derision, pointing at Taylor, who had just arrived, and claiming my son has a right to the inheritance. I decided it was time to reveal the truth. I am Katie, now 65 years old. I had supported my husband, Tommy, a dedicated doctor, as a stay-at-home wife for many years. Even after becoming a hospital director, he continued to work tirelessly as a doctor, blessed with a son who followed in his father's footsteps. I thought we had a fulfilling life. Tommy passed away at the age of 68. He worked so hard that it was almost as if he was born to be a doctor. Despite the tool it took on him, I believe he had no regrets, especially after seeing the turnout at his funeral. Many people, including colleagues, superiors, subordinates, and former patients, mourned his passing. I spent my days watching Tommy's back as he left for work, but seeing how many people cherished him, I realized his life was indeed meaningful. During the solemn funeral, Liz, the wife of my eldest son, was blatantly inappropriate, looking almost pleased about my father-in-law's death. Her terrible words during interactions with relatives confirmed my suspicions. Father-in-law was always a workaholic, right? He must have saved a lot of money, I think. Hearing her say this behind me, I couldn't believe my ears. She seemed oblivious to the fact that as a daughter-in-law, she had no inheritance rights, but her behavior was completely out of line. Seeing her like this, Taylor, my eldest son, came up to me quietly. I'm sorry, mom, Liz just won't listen, he said. There's no need for you to apologize. But if you think so, please be firmer with her. I was already well aware of Liz's behavior. Sighing, I recalled her intolerable attitude. Even when I was busy with funeral arrangements, she came to our house but didn't offer any help. Instead, she kept bringing up money matters. How much money did he save? Don't waste his inheritance. Okay, you're not young anymore. Is that what you came here to say? Well, you know, I'd be troubled if you spent it all. Her words, treating Tommy's estate as her own, infuriated and appalled me. She looked down on me and went on with her sarcastic remarks. I didn't know when I became so disliked by her, but her audacity to meddle in financial matters left me speechless many times. Liz, married to Taylor, also a doctor, has always been obsessed with money. She often hinted at needing financial assistance, worrying about Taylor's income, which made it difficult for us to get along. Frustrated with her reliance on Tommy's inheritance, I reached my breaking point. Taylor's income is so unstable. We can't even afford luxury. Then why don't you work and contribute to the household? That's unthinkable. You're lucky to live off your husband's earnings. Our conversations escalated with her bullet lean Taylor just to mock me. Her attitude towards her own family, along with her blatant disregard for her actions, was unbearable. Yes, I've lived comfortably thanks to my husband. Maybe you should show some respect to yours. If only there was something to respect. Anyway, I'm off for a manicure. Don't forget about the inheritance. She left after saying whatever she wanted, her presence like a storm passing through. I worried about how Taylor was being treated at home by her. But Liz's unruly behavior didn't stop there. During the inheritance proceedings, she repeatedly acted out in terrible ways. After the funeral, 
She kept coming to our house, parroting, is the inheritance ready yet? No matter how many times I told her these things take time, she seemed to forget immediately, pressuring me as if on cue. Even after being told she had no authority in the matter, she ignored it completely, whether she planned to claim my son Taylor's share for herself or had some other scheme. Liz was convinced a fortune was coming her way. She probably had some deal with Taylor to get a share of the inheritance. I would have stayed out of it, but Liz went too far, even trying to take valuables from our house. Hey, that's my necklace. What are you doing wearing it without permission? What's wrong with it? We're family, let's get along. I refuse to get along with a thief. Well, consider it an advance on the inheritance. We are going to get it anyway, right? No matter how much I protested, Liz simply wouldn't listen. When she took off with a necklace Tommy had given me, I stopped letting her into the house, even when she showed up and announced. Taylor would apologize saying, sorry about Liz, but never actually stopped her. Not that I expected him to. With no time to mourn the loss of Tommy's gift, Liz's malicious harassment continued. When I stopped letting her in, she went around telling her friends I was a wicked mother-in-law, shutting her out. Our neighbors, who were kind to me, just chuckled. You've got it tough. I couldn't understand why I had to be so disliked. The last straw was a strange envelope in our mailbox. It was an opened envelope addressed to my eldest son and his wife. Was this Liz's revenge for not letting her in? She had started putting her credit card bills in our mailbox. Extravagant dining and outrageous online shopping bills made my skin crawl. Liz's credit card bill was in our mailbox. What's this about? I don't know, don't ask me. And she seems to be living quite lavishly, always talking about income issues. Is everything okay with this? Well, about that. I'm in a real pinch. Mom, it's bad, but could you pay it? I called Taylor to complain, but to my astonishment, he asked something ridiculous, leaving me speechless, shaking my head in disbelief. Why would they think I would help them? He couldn't even return the stolen necklace. Their behavior, and Taylor's convenient memory, made me voice my disapproval. I'm done helping you two. You're grown adults. Why do you still need to rely on your parents? But we've got dad's inheritance, right? You won't spend it all. So help us out. The audacity. You two are perfect for each other. Stay out of my life. A scolded Taylor over the phone my tone harsh. After handing up, I immediately threw the bill in the trash. Liz must have thought she could make me pay by putting it in our mailbox. Her absurdity made my head spin. Maybe they really think they'll get the inheritance. What should I do, Tommy? I talked to Tommy's photo, feeling a mix of anger and despair, not knowing whether to be furious or sad. Was it even safe to proceed with the inheritance like this? Amid these doubts, I tried to muster up some strength. They'll get what they deserve. Frustrated with my eldest son and his wife's behavior, I continued the procedures alone. My salvation came from Tommy's will, detailing something he had left behind. Reading his will, I decided to get back at them. I knew it. You were always on my side. Looking at the will, I regained my composure. I clenched my fist determined to teach my son and his wife the lesson when the time was right. Feeling relieved, I almost forgot about Liz's credit card bill. I had no intention of doing anything about it, but it seemed she realized I had ignored it, so she called me. The inheritance procedures are finished already, but you're just saying otherwise because you want to keep it all. She accused me. Stop joking. Why would you think you're entitled to any money? Well, Taylor is the eldest son, isn't he? It's only natural. She laughed mockingly, as if I was the ignorant one. It's true, by general standards, the eldest son has inheritance rights, but I hadn't yet told them about the crucial detail in Tommy's will. They probably never imagined it, always thinking only what's convenient for them. I waited for the perfect moment to strike back. And finally, that moment arrived. I explained everything to the lawyer and arranged for his assistance in finalizing the procedures. After coordinating with the lawyer, I finally contacted Taylor when the procedures were complete. As expected, 
Liz rushed to our house, jubilant at the news. She entered the unlocked door without hesitation, and I had to suppress a laugh as I watched her confidently stride in. I've waited so long. You've been dragging your feet on these procedures, withholding the inheritance. Liz, what brings you here today? Is this gentleman the lawyer? I'm Liz, the wife of the eldest son. Ignoring me, Liz quickly approached the lawyer sitting across from me. I waited patiently, curious about what she would say next. The house, $3 million, and the position of hospital director will be inherited by my husband, the eldest son. Excuse me. Hearing her outrageous claim, I burst into laughter. The lawyer, equally shocked, and I laughed at her audacity. Liz glared at me with a cold stare. Why are you laughing? Are you upset about losing the inheritance? Three million dollars. How did you come up with that figure? He was a doctor, right? It's only natural to assume he had that much. Or are you saying you have already spent it all? Liz's obsession with money was palpable. Remember, I warned you not to squander the inheritance just because you don't have long left. And you have the nerve to say that, Liz. I've always warned you that you have no rights here. Wearing the necklace she took from me, Liz glared at me accusingly. But I was resolute, not willing to give her anything. Pointing at Taylor, who had just arrived, Liz declared, his son has a right to the inheritance. Taylor, you know there's no inheritance for you. Right, wait, why not? Don't you remember? Really, are you still talking about that? That issue was settled long ago. How can you say it's settled? You haven't even made amends. What are you talking about? Liz seemed clueless, so I decided to remind them both. Years ago, before marrying Liz, Taylor was married to another woman, even had a child with her, but he abandoned his family for an affair with Liz. The truth came out when Taylor couldn't pay alimony and child support to his ex-wife and begged Tommy for help. I never expected you to be so irresponsible. What were you thinking? I had no choice if I wanted to marry Liz. Then make amends yourself. I won't pay a dime. You have the money, right? Just a little help, Dad. Tommy was furious at Taylor's remarks. When Taylor made excuses about being overwhelmed with their new life and needing money for their wedding, Tommy, in a moment of tough love, chose his grandchild over Taylor. Fine, I'll pay instead. My grandson doesn't need to suffer because of a father like you. Don't be so sarcastic. In return, I won't give you a dime from now on. Don't expect to receive any part of my inheritance. At that time, Taylor underestimated Tommy, assuming his words were just a spur-of-the-moment statement. However, Tommy didn't attend their wedding, stating, Why should I celebrate for someone who abandoned their family? He ceased all financial support thereafter. Dad, come on. You might need our care in the future. We're family. Meet us halfway. I don't need anything from you. I'd rather not depend on someone like you. Knowing his parents were well off, Taylor had hinted at future care needs, subtly asking for financial help. Tommy, steadfast in his decision, included this in his will. The will clearly stated that his estate was to be inherited by his wife, me, and Taylor's child from his ex-wife. Tommy, a man of traditional values, in short, not a single dime would go to Taylor and his wife. I learned about this during the funeral arrangements when Tommy's liar showed me the will. Remembering my anger at the time, I was profoundly grateful to Tommy for leaving such instructions. So, Taylor, you have no inheritance rights from Tommy, declared the lawyer while reading the will. The couple was stunned. I then addressed Liz about the items you took from our house. You intended them as an advance on the inheritance, right? Uh, well that, as you heard, you have no rights. So naturally, you'll return them, right? Pointing at the necklace Liz was wearing, I demanded its return. Reluctantly, she threw it at me, clenching her teeth. I can't believe this. I came here today thinking I'd receive a part of the inheritance. Well, you seemed so sure about it when you bragged about marrying Taylor. I thought you knew all along. Recalling her smug attitude, I realized they were indeed a perfect match. You'll regret this. The hospital, the position of director, if there's no heir, 
it's a problem, right? Unfortunately, that position has already been passed on to a capable subordinate. Why not to the child? It's the norm. When you do something out of the norm, you reap what you sow. Desperate for any inheritance, Liz clung to the lawyer, but to no avail. The lawyer calmly dismissed her claims, leaving her fuming. So what will you do? Sue us. If you want to add to your shame, feel free. Liz left in a huff, and Taylor followed. Watching them go, I held the necklace and subtly celebrated my small victory. Afterward, Liz never contacted me again, and the procedures were completed smoothly. I worried if they would bother my grandson. But Taylor, unable to afford child support, made no contact. It seemed there were no issues. The couple, now in turmoil over the lost inheritance, seemed to be heading towards divorce. Taylor was even accused by Liz of marrying her for money. Blood is thicker than water, fits them perfectly. Taylor once demanded a share of the inheritance or the house, but I dismissed him immediately. Talk in your sleep, I replied, handing up. Disappointed in my son, I was relieved by a letter from Taylor's ex-wife. It included photos of my biological grandson and a note of gratitude. Lucky to have such wonderful grandparents, she wrote. They were living happily. Sharing this news with Tommy's photo, I felt content, knowing I could report something positive to him despite Taylor's betrayal.